In this video, we will discuss vestibulo-ocular reflex, adult's eye reflex, the neuroanatomy of the vestibulo-ocular reflex, and the clinical implications of the vestibulo-ocular reflex. So, what's vestibulo-ocular reflex? Doll's eye reflex. Eyes move in the opposite direction to the head movement. When head moves to the right, clockwise, eyes move to the left. And when head moves to the left, eyes move to the right. This horizontal gaze is controlled by the horizontal case center in the palm. Similarly, when head moves up, eyes move down and when head moves down eyes move up this vertical gaze is controlled by vertical gaze center in the midbrain by the rostral interstitial nucleus of medial longitudinal fasciculus vor controls both horizontal and vertical gaze it's connected to the horizontal gaze center in the pons and also to the midbrain structures rostral interstitial medial longitudinal fasciculus nucleus that controls the vertical gaze it's the peripheral control of horizontal and vertical case. What's the purpose of VOR? The purpose is to keep the image focused on retina. What are the sensory and motor components of the vestibulo-ocular reflex? Sensory component are the hair cells in the semicircular canal which detect head rotation or detect the angular movement. And number two, otolith organs in utricle and secule detect position of the head relative to the gravity. They detect linear acceleration. Fibers pass through the vestibular ganglion to the vestibular nerve nucleus in the midbrain which has four nuclei. Then there is a central processing mechanism and a motor output to the eye muscles. Semicircular canals are perpendicular to each other and otolith organs are made up of calcium carbonate. What are the connections of vestibular nucleus? Vestibular nucleus is connected to the cerebellum. This is the vestibular nucleus connected to the cerebellum. Which part of cerebellum? The flocculonodular lobe. Number two, it has the vestibulospinal tract for the spinal cord. Number three, on the opposite side via medial longitudinal fasciculus connected to the third, fourth and sixth cranial nerve nuclei, to the thalamus and then to the cerebral cortex. It's connected to the horizontal and vertical gaze center. This is labyrinth vestibular nucleus to the parapontine reticular formation and then to the sixth nerve nucleus and to the lateral rack. And it's connected to the vertical gaze central rostral interstitial nucleus of medial longitudinal fasciculus and interstitial nucleus of Cajal. How we are is initiated. Movement of the head moves the endolymph. And what's particular about endolymph? That this is the only extracellular fluid with the highest concentration of potassium ion. So movement of the head moves endolymph in the internal ear. Endolymph moves in the opposite direction to the rotation, depolarizes the hair cells in the semicircular canals and generate action potentials. And in the other labyrinth, endolymph moves in the other direction causing hyperpolarization to inhibit that size. Otolith which are more dense than endolymph always move in the opposite direction to the rotation, distort the hair cells and generate action potential. How VOR controls horizontal gaze? For horizontal gaze the information goes to the vestibular nucleus and then to the parapontine reticular formation the center for horizontal control and then to the nucleus of the sixth nerve abducens nerve ipsilaterally to contract the lateral rectus and via medial longitudinal fasciculus to the opposite side to the oculomotor nucleus to adduct the medial rectus muscle. How to differentiate supranuclear lesions of the pons or horizontal gaze from frontal eye field area 8 parieto occipital temporal lobe and midbrain lesions. VOR differentiates whether the lesion is in the pons or above the pons in the frontal eye field, parieto occipital temporal lobe or in the thalamomesencephalic junction in the midbrain. If head turning side to side causes horizontal eye movement in opposite direction, then horizontal gaze controlled by the pons is normal, so the lesion is above that. How to check vestibulo-ocular reflex in unconscious comatose patient? Number one, by side to side turning the head and number two, by caloric 
test. So what's the effect of side to side head movement? Side to side turning the head activates VOR. If eyes move in the opposite direction of the head movement horizontally, doll's eye reflex. Then horizontal gaze center in the pons is intact. Number two, if eyes move in the same direction as the head, then brain stem is not intact. And number three, if eyes don't move, then it's brain death. What are the contraindications to head movement? A spinal cord injury. How to check VOR in a patient with a spinal cord injury whose head cannot be moved. It can be done by calorie test. What's calorie test? Irrigation of the external ear with cold and hot water stimulates the internal ear structures connected with the horizontal case that act on the inner ear to move the endolymph. So what's the normal response? With cold water irrigation, eyes move in the opposite direction and with the hot water irrigation, they move in the same direction. Inumenix is cause cold opposite warm same. An abnormal response indicates brain stem damage and there is no eye movement then it's a brain death. What are the side effects of a calorie test? Nystagmus, vertigo and nausea.